Hello dear students, welcome back to Physics Online Bridge Course Classes. So in last video, so we are discussing about that, so applications of dimensional formula. So from that applications of dimensional formula, totally we got three applications. So I will make you remember once again. So in case of dimensional formula, by taking use of dimensional formula, we can check the correctness of the given equation. So that is first application. Second thing is to convert from that one system of unit into other system, we are going to use the dimensional formula and third use. So from the help of dimensional formula, we can derive the equations. So then what are the applications I can list out here to check the correctness of the equation and second application is to convert one system of unit into other system and third application is so in case of the dimensional formula, we can able to derive certain kind of equations. So now we will be focus on what are the limitations of those dimensional formulas. So it carries certain kind of limitations in case of dimensional formulas. So the first limitation I got. So what are the limitations of dimensional formulas here? So dimensional formulas doesn't give any information about that dimensional less constant in the given formula. For example, in order to derive that equation, so time period of oscillation of simple pendulum. So that equation is 2 pi into square root of L by G here. So in order to derive this equation, so 2 pi is a dimensional less constant. So from the dimensional formula, so it doesn't give any information about that dimensional less constant. What is the first, li first limitation here? So in case of the dimensional formula, it doesn't give any information about dimensional less constant in the formulae. So we are discussing about that limitations of dimensional formula. So what are the limitations here? Limitations of dimensional formula. So what's the first lim limitation I get it here? So dimensional formula doesn't give any information about dimensional less constant in the given formula. So dimensional formula so does not not give any information about any information about dimensional less constant dimensional less constant so that is one limitation so another limitations from the dimensional formula is so dimensional formula is not applicable if the formula contains any trigonometric function and as well as logarithmic function. So remember here dimensional formula method is not applicable if that equation consists of trigonometric function and logarithmic function. So we are unable to derive. So the equation if that equation consists of trigonometric function as well as logarithmic function. So dimensional formula formula is not applicable applicable if equation consists of trigonometric function and logarithmic function logarithmic function logarithmic function here. So these are all the limitations under dimensional formula. So hope you got about that dimensional formula. So since from the first video, so we got how to write the dimensional formula and in case of dimensional formula, so some physical quantities having the same dimensional formulas and so we are going to consider M, L, T. So in case of classical mechanics, we will use these three terms. Whereas in case of dealing with the temperature M, L, T and K here in terms of temperature we'll use and in order to discuss about that current here. So we'll use ampere. So in that uh, next upcoming classes in second PU, you will use the term ampere. So I didn't explain about those things. So M, L, T and K. 
by using these four terms we can able to write the dimensional formulas of respective given physical quantities so now today we will be discussing another interesting chapters related to measurement so already in first videos only we discussed that so what you mean by measurement here so measurement means the process of comparison of a physical quantity with same unit you said okay right so what's the purpose of measurement so physics always needs exactness means we need that exactness that exactness comes only from the measurement i said okay so in order to get that exactness measurement is required here that measurement is done by instruments only right so whatever the measurement you are going to perform that measurement is with the help of instruments okay so if the measurement is with the help of instrument means i need that measuring scales here so in order to measure the physical quantities so we are getting certain kind of uncertainty while measuring the physical quantity so look at here so in order to measure the physical quantities we are getting uncertainty uncertainty means not perfectness you can call so that uncertainty we will name by errors here so in physics that is important term so that important term is error here so look at here in case of measurement we said that so for that exactness we will use to measure the things here in order to measure the things we will use measuring instrument okay so in case of that measuring instrument so that measuring instruments will give certain kind of uncertainty that uncertainty we will name by errors here so that uncertainty i will give the name errors here so from today onwards we will be focusing on errors here so that is also part of the dimensional means part of that units and measurement here so in case of that units and measurement already i got that so what are the fundamental units derived physical quantity and a dimensional formula so applications of dimensional formula and limitations of dimensional formula i got that so now we will be discussing about that errors here so look at here in case of measuring the physical quantity we are getting certain kind of uncertainty that uncertainty i will name by errors here so errors or simply you can call it as error here what's the mean of that error here so let me give one uh, generalized example for example true length of this object is 10 cm so what's the true length here so true length of this object is 10 cm if i give this same object so i assign one work for you so measure the length of this object so while measuring so you are getting that answer as for example what's the true length here true length is 10 cm so if i give this object and if i give that measuring scale so that measured value will be measured value not exactly 10 cm you may get that sometimes 9.9 cm for example so you are getting measured value is so if you measure this length you will get that answer for example 9.9 cm then what's the difference here so that error means the difference between true value and measured value what do you mean by error here the difference between true value and measured value here so what is the true value here true value of this object is means true length i can take so true length is 10 cm here while measuring i got that 9.9 cm here so 0.1 cm so this 0.1 cm is nothing but that is error while measuring so hope you understand the mean of error here so how will you define that error here so error i can define it as it is the difference between true value and measured value so what is that error here it is the difference between true value and measured value so i can call this one as the difference between the difference between true value and measured value the difference between true value and measured value we can call that error here so let me give one example another example so true length so true length is 10 cm while measuring for example if i measure first first time 
I will get that answer as 9.9 .9 centimeter and if I measure by that second time I will get that answer as 9.8 centimeter here so okay which one is very much closer to the true value here 9.9 .9 or 9.8 .9 here 9.9 .9 is very much closer to the true value here so this method means this phenomenon I can call it as accuracy here which is more accurate here 9.9 .9 or 9.8 .9 here 9.9 .9 is more accurate here so what's the mean of accuracy here closeness to the true value i can call it as accuracy so remember the term here i will use accuracy here what's the mean of accuracy closeness to the true value so look at here so these two are observed value or measured value 9.9 .9 and 9.8 centimeter so compared to these value so 9.9 .9 centimeter is very much closer to the true value so that 9.9 .9 centimeter is more accurate here then I can able to define another term here so that is accuracy accuracy here so what is that accuracy here closeness to the true value closeness to the true value closeness to the true value I can call it as accuracy here next one more term I will use so that is precision so what is that another term here precision here so so what's the word mean precision here so look at here I will give you one normal scale here so take that length is 0 to 15 centimeter so here 1 centimeter is there so between 0 and 1 how many digits are there so it consists of 10 digit here okay so what's the value of one digit here so did you get my point so from 0 to 1 10 lines are there I want to find out what is the value of one line here so that is least count here what is the least possible measurement from this scale here so look at here so this is 1 centimeter I will write it as a 1 here from 0 to 1 how many lines are there 10 lines are there so 1 by 10 so that is 0 0.1 centimeter here so look at here what is the least possible measurement from this scale from this scale I can able to measure smallest distance is 0 0.1 centimeter here so one more scale is there so in first view you will learn that means you are having that experiments so that is vernier caliper so that is one instrument so from that instrument you are getting that least count means that least count of that experiment means that equipment is 0 0.01 centimeter so it measures smallest distance 0 0.1 centimeter it measures smallest value is 0 0.01 centimeter so which one will give the more accurate value by this one we can get that more accurate value so its limit is 0 0.1 centimeter so from the normal scale if the distance is less than 0 0.1 meter this scale is not applicable here why because least distance I can measure is 0 0.1 centimeter so less than 0 0.1 centimeter length we cannot able to measure from this normal scale so for that purpose we will use another scale so that is vernier calipers here so that vernier calipers will give that accuracy so about that 0 0.01 centimeter here now I need to understand the term precision here so in case of that precision so for example I give a normal scale and vernier scale example here so in order to define that precision the limit to which physical quantity can be measured so for example what is the limit for this scale 0 0.1 centimeter is the limit for this scale for the vernier calipers what is the limit here 0 0.01 centimeter so this much of small distance I can able to measure from vernier calipers instrument so that is the limit of vernier calipers instrument so precision means the limit to which a physical quantity can be measured so that is about precision here so hope you understand these three terms now i will be focusing on about that errors here so look at here in case of errors there are two types of errors are present so one is systematic error and another one is random error here so in case of errors there are two types of errors are present so let me look at what are the types of errors here so we'll understand about that types of error so 
in case of that error first one is systematic error and second one is random error okay so now we'll understand in case of systematic error so systematic error means errors due to definite reasons means so we know why the errors are get occurs here so that kind of errors i will take it as systematic errors here so what is that systematic errors here errors due to definite reason i will call it as systematic error here so look at here so i will understand about that systematic error first what is that systematic errors here so errors due to definite reasons errors due to definite reason so that is systematic error so we know the reason for the errors here so such kind of errors are belongs to systematic error again in case of systematic errors there are certain types of systematic errors are there so what are the types of systematic errors i can understand here so in case of systematic errors so we can consider what are the types of systematic errors here so in case of systematic errors so i will consider that types of systematic errors so in case of systematic errors i can consider that for example errors are get occurs due to fault design in the instrument so look at here so i am getting certain kind of errors while measuring the physical quantity i said that true length of this object is 10 cm okay so if you start measure that length of this object by taking one scale here so while measuring this length so whatever the scale you are using so if suppose if that scale is get bent or if that numbers are not at or appears clearly then you are getting certain kind of errors here so look at here so while measuring the physical quantity so we are going to take use of that instruments here so whatever the instruments you are using there so if that instrument itself it has certain kind of fault here so due to fault designing of the instrument you will get the errors here so that belongs to systematic error here so what is the first means so first type i can consider fault design in the instrument so what is that systematic error here in case of systematic error so errors due to definite reason what's the definite reason first reason maybe so that instrument is somewhere wrong means that instrument is getting fault here so due to fault designing of the instrument you will get certain kind of error so that is one agreeable error here and second thing is so because of that our negligence for example if you are not observing that properly so then also we will get that certain kind of error so for example if you are not observing clearly digits here you will get certain kind of error so that kind of error we will like, we'll call it as personal error so second one is personal error so what is that personal error due to our negligence so if you are not looking that reading in a proper way we will get certain kind of error so that error is belongs to personal error here so next one we will take that so due to change in weather condition also we will get certain kind of errors here so that kind of error is environmental error here so look at here in case of that error so in systematic error i said because of definite reason only will get certain kind of errors so i know the reason for the error such errors i will call it as systematic error here so in case of systematic error the first reason for getting error is for example due to fault designing of the instrument second reason so if you are means if you are not taking the reading properly you will get that certain kind of error and third reason is because of that weather condition you will get certain kind of error so such kind of error we can we can call it as environmental error environmental error here so i will give one general example for example if you are performing performing that ohms law experiment right so while performing that ohms law experiment temperature should be constant why because if the temperature of the conductor is getting increase means resistance value will also getting changes here okay so for example treat that if that ohms law experiment if you are performing on a summer season so for example at summer season maybe temperature is around about 50 degrees celsius very hot temperature 
So in that surrounding temperature, surrounding temperature is 50 degree Celsius. The same experiment if you perform on winter season, so temperature may be 10 degree Celsius. So because of the change in weather condition, you will get certain kind of errors. So such kind of errors I will name it as environmental error here. So because of that change in weather condition also I will get certain kind of errors here. So such kind of error I will take it as environmental error here. So these are all belongs to that. So systematic errors here. So we know definite reason for that errors here because of the fault design of the instrument, because of our negligency, because of that environmental changes. So so because of these things you will get certain kind of error so that belongs to systematic error then we'll look after about what we mean by that random error here so for example so i will give you correct instrument only okay i will set that proper surrounding environment i i don't want to change that environment also and so you are too much careful while measuring the things so i'm not making any kind of mistakes here so i'm taking correct instrument and I am not doing, uh, means I have hope, uh, I will not show any kind of negligence while measuring the things and so environment is not changing. So these conditions are not there. So means, so in order to measure on physical quantity, I will take correct instrument. So I am not making any kind of negligence while taking the reading. Environment is also not changing, means temperature and all the things, vagera. so it will not get changes. Even though while measuring this physical quantity, I will get certain kind of errors. So, did you think why such things are getting happen here? True length of this object is 10 centimeter. I will give you correct instrument only. And uh, hope I hope uh, you are too much uh, curious means you are having too much concern about measuring the length here. So, you are taking exact length means you are not doing any kind of negligence. Even though, so you will not get that measured value as equal to that of true value. For example, true length of this object is 10 centimeter here. The same object if you are measuring from the measuring scale. So this is true value and measured value may not be exactly equal to 10 centimeter. So for example, so this may be equal to 9.99 centimeter if you measure first time and if you measure the same object in the second time 9.98 you will get. So if you measure the same object 9.89 centimeter like that you are getting. So why such different readings are getting up here? I don't know that. Did you get my point? So I will take that correct reading means the correct instrument I am taking. I am not showing any kind of negligence. So surrounding temperature and all the things it won't get changes. Even though I am getting certain kind of errors while measuring here. What do you mean by error here? The difference between true value. True value is 10 centimeter. Measured value is 9.9, 9.98, 9.89 .9, like that. So even though certain kind of errors are get appear, so such kind of errors are random errors I will consider. I don't know definite reason for the errors. So such kind of errors are belongs to random errors here. So errors due to indefinite reasons. Errors due to indefinite reason. Errors due to indefinite reason. So such kind of error we will name it as random error. So look at here, errors are due to indefinite reason. I don't know what's the reason for the errors here. So such kind of errors I will take it as random error. Then what shall I do here? So if that errors are appear, shall I leave that errors? No, it is not possible. Why? Because I won't get that exactness if I leave about that errors here. Then what suppose I have to do here? I have to minimize the errors. So keep it in mind. So while measuring the physical quantity with the measurement means with that instruments, if you get certain kind of errors, I need to minimize the errors here. So what shall I do here? I need to minimize the errors here. Then how to minimize the error is the task here. So in order to minimize the errors, so we'll consider certain kind of mathematical steps to avoid the errors. So I hope uh, you are having habit of calculating that mean value or average value. Did you know that what is the purpose of taking the average value or mean value here? So the purpose of taking average value or mean value is to reduce the errors here. So what is the main purpose? To reduce the error. So if you take that average value, so errors will get minimized here. So that is the purpose of taking that average value. So look at, look at here. So in order to minimize the errors, what are the mathematical tools I need to use here? So in case of random error, Errors are get appear due to indefinite reason. So 
in order to avoid such kind of errors we will use certain kind of mathematical steps to minimize the errors so those are first i will take that in case of random error again i will take that types of random error so first one is absolute error so first one is what absolute error what the mean of that absolute error here so for example i am measuring one physical quantity so for example so i am measuring that length of this object so i will take number of trials here so first time i will measure its length is a1 if i measure that second time its length is a2 if i measure that third time its length is a3 so if i measure that n times here so look at here i want to take that if a1 a2 and a3 so on up to a of n are the measurement are the measurement here so now i want to take that average value or mean value a bar is mean value how to find that mean or average value number of trials here so for example a1 plus of a2 plus of a3 so on up to a of n divided by how many trials you done so n number of trials so this is the way to find that average value okay so now i have to consider what you mean by absolute error so that absolute error is for example i will take by symbolical representation delta of a so that absolute error is nothing but it is that difference between mean value and observed value mean value is what a bar here observed value is what so a1 here first trial is a1 average value minus of observed value so that will gives about absolute error what is that absolute error here it is the difference between it is the difference between mean value and observed value it is the difference between mean value mean value is nothing but average value it is the difference between mean value and observed value value so that we can call it as absolute error here what is that formula here absolute error is delta of a is equal to a bar minus of a1 so similarly for example this one is delta of a2 so that is a bar minus of a2 delta of a3 is nothing but what a bar minus of a3 like that so i have to find out that absolute error here what's that absolute error here it is the difference between mean value and observed value so that is absolute error now i can take that mean absolute error so mean absolute error means average of the absolute error here delta a1 delta a2 delta a3 so on delta of an is equal to what a bar minus of an here so now i have to consider what you mean by that mean absolute error here so look at here next thing i need to understand about that mean absolute error so what is that next thing mean absolute error so that mean absolute error is delta of a bar i will consider what's the symbolical representation for my convenience i will take delta of a bar here so modulus modulus means i can take only positive value here so look at here what is that mean absolute error here arithmetic mean of all absolute error so arithmetic mean of all absolute all absolute error so we can call it as mean absolute error so look at here so delta of a1 i said and delta of a2 so on delta of an so that is absolute error here so mean absolute error means delta of a bar is equal to delta of a1 mod of means modulus of delta of a1 plus modulus of delta of a2 plus modulus of delta of a3 so on divided by n here so that is mean absolute error what this one is so this one is 
mean absolute error here so arithmetic mean of all absolute error it means simply you can take that i have to find that average value of absolute error so that is mean absolute error here so next one is relative error here so what's that next thing so next thing i need to understand that is relative error so what's that relative error i need to understand here so that relative error is nothing but so it is the ratio of <coughs> mean absolute error to the mean value here so look at here what is that relative error here it is the ratio of mean absolute error mean absolute error to the mean value so what's that mean absolute error delta of a bar is mean absolute error here so relative error is equal to what so relative error so it is equal to what mean absolute error it is the ratio of mean absolute error here so modulus of delta of a bar divided by mean error is nothing but what a bar here so in order to take that absolute error a1 plus of a2 plus of a3 up to so of a of n divided by n here so that is mean value so this one is mean absolute error here so it is the ratio of mean absolute error to the mean value so that is about relative error here next one is percentage error so percentage error is nothing but what so next one is so i can find that error in terms of percentage so that is percentage error here so that percentage error is nothing but what so relative error into 100 relative error into 100 so that is nothing but percentage error or we can say that relative error is nothing but what delta of a bar divided by a bar into 100 so this is the way to find out that percentage error here so i will give you some questions so hope you will solve that 